Welcome and hope you're doing well. We're going to discuss the Motokota life story of Omar Sharif with five character traits and reveal those highs and lows about his life as a Hollywood star. Who was the first Arab icon? Hopefully it will inspire or even motivate you. As we only judge a person by their character, not race, color or religion. So please click on the subscribe button below to join our motocultural family if you are new. My name is Bobby A. Sayed. I am the founder of The Emma Show. And we had approached Omar Sharif to receive the Emma honor when he was in Paris. However, due to other commitments, he was unable to attend in person as we had both wanted. Once again, the Emma TV show was canceled by the broadcasters prior to us honoring him. A show that had honored the great Nelson Mandela. It's fair to say, like our previous Sydney Poitier video, we had acknowledged Omar's real multicultural contribution that seems to be overlooked by many from time to time. When considering they are pioneers who've opened those many doors. Here's a clip to celebrate the great actor Omar Sharif. And if you're too young to follow his career, then you would have come across one of his great films. Let's show you a clip from Lawrence of Arabia. You are angry, English. He was nothing. The well is everything. The Hazimi may not drink at our wells. He knew that. Salam. Hut, hut, hut. Sheriff Ali. So long as the Arabs fight tribe against tribe, so long will they be a little people. A silly people, greedy, barbarous and cruel, as you are. Here you can see the issues at hand. A description by an Englishman played by the great Peter Too of the barbaric mentality of the Arabs, who at the time were wrapped up in their own petty tribal politics, but not in a sophisticated manner that we know the Europeans have conducted themselves in. This is a great film very revealing to understand the issues then or even maybe now. However, before we go any further, let's show you another clip of Omar Sharif as the lead in Dr. Zhivago. It tells a Russian story during those difficult times within their civil war. Let's try to understand the Russian brutal history as this was filmed in 1965. If we reached out then, we should try to reach out now to understand the issues to avoid a risk of a deadly nuclear war. Why do you call her my wife? I met her again. We served together on the Ukrainian front. If she's with you, I'm sure she'll vouch for me. I haven't seen her since the war. She's in Uryatin. Uryatin? The private life is dead for a man with any manhood. As you can see from this clip, Russians have had many wars and this clip of their revolution is an example of this. Number one, belief. Omar Sharif was born on the 10th of April 1932 as Michael Dmitri Shalom in Alexandria, Egypt and the only son of a lumber merchant. At the age of four, he had moved to Cairo where he had gone on to study at the Cairo University with a degree in mathematics and physics. He would work as part of his father's business for a short while following graduation. But after having always wanted to be an actor, he would find his breakthrough in the film Sira Filwadi in 1954. This also known as Struggle in the Valley. Opposite actress Fatin Hamahama who he would marry in 1955, just a year after the film release. Here, he would convert to Islam, changing his name to Omar al-Sharif. From there, he would rise to stardom in Egypt, appearing in films such as Our Beautiful Days in 1955, Sleepless in 1957, and Struggle of the Nile in 1959. 
His successes as a young actor would make him a huge Egyptian star. Alongside Rushdie Abaza, Shukri Sahan, and Salah Zulfika. While big in Egypt, he wasn't known outside of the country and during his casting for Lawrence of Arabia. However, David Lean was insistent on having a diverse cast wherever possible to make the film authentic. This would be in Omar's favour as the film would be a critical and commercial success. He would be nominated for Best Supporting Actor for the 35th Academy Awards and win Best Supporting Actor in a Motion Picture and New Star of the Year. This alongside a seven film contract with Columbia at $50,000 a film would propel Omar to the big screen in the US, making him one of the most prominent stars of the 1960s and 70s. It was also here where he and Peter too became good friends. Number two, self-discipline. At a young age, Sharif showed proficiency for languages and by the time he had starred in Lawrence of Arabia, he could speak French, Greek, Italian, Spanish alongside his mother tongue being Arabic on top of English. He would utilize his prowess with languages alongside his accent to play a multiple of different roles such as Francesco, a priest in Behold a Pale Horse in 1964 alongside Gregory Peck and Anthony Quinn. The Yellow Rolls Royce in 1964 as Davish, a Yugoslavian wartime patriot. By the time he came to play Yuri Shivago in 1965, Dr. Shivago, he had proven to be a capable actor with Genghis Khan and Marco the Magnificent in 1965. He would win his second Best Actor award from the Golden Globes. And to this day, Dr. Shivago remains as one of the top 10 highest grossing films of all times, adjusted for inflation. The film's long lasting legacy has also impacted many filmmakers, including Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck, who cited it as an influence for the 2013 hit sensation Frozen. Number three, hard working. Omar has starred in many films throughout his lifetime making him one of the most recognizable stars of the 20th century. He would often have at least two releases per year, such as The Night of the Generals and More Than a Miracle, which both came out in 1967. McKenna's Gold and The Appointment in 1969, The Valley, The Horseman and The Burglars being released in 1971. And The 13th Warrior, much later, he was not only a talented actor, but was working very hard to find work to keep his passion alive professionally. Even when he would shift his attention to bridge, he would form the Omar Shari Bridge Circus in 1967 and then invited many professional players around the world, such as a young Mike Lydon and Benito Carrizo, who considered to be one of the best bridge players of all times alongside members of the Italian Blue Team. They would showcase bridge around the world and help promote the game by exhibition matches. Even before making a group, Omar was also captain of the Egyptian team in 1964 and 1968, where he would finish 21st. In both occasions now, imagine being a professional actor and bridge player at the same time. Number four, tolerance. Throughout his life, he has not been a stranger to conflict. When working with co-star Barbara Streisand became public as it almost cost him his Egyptian citizenship due to Streisand being Jewish during filming Funny Girl that came out in 1968. Due to his hectic acting life and the travel restrictions the Nasser government imposed in the form of exit visa, Omar would often remain in Europe between shoots. Such a decision would ultimately cost him his marriage, though he and her mama, his wife and children would remain friends after their divorce in 1974. On top of this, his interest in bridge and horse racing would impact his time with family, with him dropping bridge later in life, not wanting to be a slave to his passion, as he would tell the press in 2006. As he reflected how he didn't get to spend much time with his loved ones due to his many commitments 
It's rare for a public figure to admit their faults, particularly now as movements such as cancel culture seem to demand perfection. Number five, fearless. With honesty comes honor. Indeed, many countries around the world have recognized this aspect of who he is. He has been bestowed the grand cross of the order of merit in his home country of Egypt, Knight of the Legion of Honor by France and Commander of the Order by the Moroccan government. On top of this, he was awarded the inaugural Sergei Einstein Medal by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization in recognition of his contribution to world cinema and cultural diversity, or should I say, multiculturalism. He was also given an honorary degree by the University of Hull for his efforts in film and for his later films such as Monsieur Ibrahim in 2003. He would achieve the Caesar Award for the Best Actor, an honour very few non-French actors get to achieve. His final film role as a lead actor would come in the short educational film 1001 Inventions and the world of Ib al Haytham, which was part of the International Year of Light campaign undertaken by UNESCO. It's clear his reflection in later life had impacted the approach he took for future roles, looking to take on roles which aligned with his insistence on not doing that rubbish and keep some dignity. When speaking on his film to do with Monsieur Ibrahim, Towards the later stages of his life, Omar was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. But in spite of this, Omar would still act when he believed the role was worth it. Producer and director of 1001 Inventions and the world of Ib al haytum were moved by Omar's work ethics. Noting he worked tirelessly despite his onset of his failing memory to honor the 11th century Arab scientist. Ib al Hatim. Omar came out of retirement specifically to do this film as he strongly believed it would help educate children all over the world about the origins of scientific methods. Like Science and Camera Obscura, the film is dedicated to his legacy, having passed away before the film was released. On what would have been his 86th birthday, Google celebrated the life of Omar Shari by honoring him in 2018. Also in obituaries to Omar Sharif, he is often remembered as a heartthrob, with The Guardian liking his status descending from that of Rudolf Valentino of the silent film era. Indeed, his role as a leading man and a love interest clearly challenged the convention of male stars in Hollywood as an Arab. In summary, Omar Sharif has starred in many of the most iconic films of the 20th century, such as Lawrence of Arabia, Dr. Zhivago and Genghis Khan. Alongside nearly 60 years on the screen, he was also a renowned contact bridge player. With his name licensed on a bridge video game, the Omar Sharif Bridge, this was initially released in 1992 and is still sold on Windows and mobile platforms to this day. Having starred in his own country, Egypt, as a film star, he remains one of the few Egyptian actors to have broken out into the golden age of Hollywood. Why don't you leave us a comment and share your own thoughts about Omar Sharif and let us know if we've missed anything. We'd really appreciate a like or even a subscribe and if possible, please donate on Patreon however little the amount to support this channel's ongoing mission to undertake multicultural campaigns. And remember, it's what's inside that counts. A butter we have used at the Emmas. As we are grateful to Omar Sharif, support for Emma as a true pioneer who made being an Arab acceptable in the Western media. So until next time, thank you for watching and keep it multicultural.